All right, friends, it is time for our toe up sock series. Toe up socks are just another way of making knitted socks, and they can look exactly the same as a cuff down sock if you want them to. They're a really good change up if you kind of have gotten bored with doing a cuff down sock, or maybe you want to try out a pattern that needs to go in a different direction than cuff down. They're also nice if you have a smaller ball of sock yarn and you want to make sure you have enough for the foot. With toe up socks, you knit the foot first and then you can continue going until you run out of yarn. We're going to start with Judy's Magic Cast On, which is a really great sort of figure eight cast on method that gives you a smooth start to your sock. Pick up your yarn and measure out a length to your elbow. I know you couldn't see it off screen, but that's about how long it is to my elbow, and that should give us enough for our sock. I'm gonna start by getting my yarn onto my needle. You can start with a slip knot, but I just don't like the slip knot as much as what I'm about to do. The slip knot is just a little bit bumpier, and what I'm gonna start with is a twist. So I have my tail off here to the back, I have my working yarn here to the front, and it just creates a loop. So again, when I stick it on the needle, my tail is off to the back, my working yarn is off to the front, and then all I'm gonna do is switch those. So I'm gonna twist them. So now I've got my tail in the front and my working yarn in the back. I'm gonna show that one more time, but this time I'm holding on to both of my needles. That's because we need both needles to do Judy's Magic Cast On. Whether you do a slip knot or a twist, they just need to go on the top needle here. So on my top needle, I'm just gonna slide my yarn on. Let me make sure that my tail's in the back and my working yarn is in the front. Then I'm just gonna give them a twist, twisting that tail to the front and the working yarn to the back. Now what I'm gonna do is close those two needles together and I'm gonna grab onto them. So let me show you how I grab it. So with these three fingers down here, I'm gonna grab both strands. With my pointer finger and my thumb, I'm going to split the yarn. So I'll show you again. With these three fingers, I'm gonna grab both strands. With my pointer finger and my thumb, I'm going to split. That is our setup, so let's get started on the cast on. With Judy's Magic Cast On, there's only one thing that you need to remember, and that is that opposites attract. So we have a top needle and a bottom needle, a top strand of yarn and a bottom strand of yarn. And these are always going to go together in opposite ways. So let's look what we're gonna do first. We already have a stitch here on our top needle, so we're gonna start with the bottom needle. The bottom needle always goes to its opposite the top strand of yarn. So go ahead and swing both needles up and over. With that bottom needle, you're going to grab onto the yarn and let it slide in between. Now we're just gonna go back and forth between the top needle and the bottom needle, making sure that opposites always attract. All right, so for the top needle, we're gonna go with the bottom strand of yarn. Swing both needles underneath with the top needle, grab onto that yarn and let it slide in between. Now it's the bottom needle's turn. Up and over, grab the yarn, let it slide in between. You just keep going back and forth until you reach the desired number of stitches. Swing underneath, grab, slide in between. Over the top, grab, let it slide in between. Underneath, grab, slide in between. Over the top, grab, and slide in between. I'm pausing here to talk about stitch count. So my goal here is a 60 stitch sock. I know that I'm not gonna start my toe the same width as my foot. So it needs to be about half of that, half of 60, is 30. But here's the other factor at play. When I start to increase for my toe, I'm going to be increasing by four every round. If I start at 30 and then increase by four, I won't actually get to 60. I'll blow right by it and get to 62. So with that knowledge, 
I'm going to take closer to half and go with 28 since that is divisible by four. So I'm going to keep going until I have 28 total stitches or 14 stitches on the top and 14 stitches on the bottom. Okay, I have made it to my stitch count. I've got 28 stitches total or 14 on each needle. So that's the closest you can get to half of your foot stitches, but still have a multiple of four. Okay, we're about to flip this thing around and get to knitting, but watch carefully. Make sure you still have your tail on the bottom and you still have your working yarn to the top. This next part is a little tricky, so watch carefully and rewind and watch again if you need to. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip everything over, being really careful to hold my last stitches into place. If you look closely, you can see that this last stitch here, the one that's kind of gray, it is not anchored down yet. So we're about to anchor it down. So I'm gonna take my tail, which is still here in the front, and cross it over my working yarn. That's going to anchor that stitch, but only once I start knitting. So I'm gonna leave the tail crossing over there, pick up my working yarn from behind. Now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and start knitting so that I get that anchored in place. You can see when I pull up on that working yarn, it's going to hold that stitch. So. I'm going to pull out what was the back needle and I'm going to start knitting magic loop. I'm going to go ahead and knit that first stitch while I've still got everything into place. My working yarn is still coming up over that tail. You might have to hold the tail down. Knit that first stitch. And now everything is anchored in place and we can continue on with our toe. Our whole first round is just going to be a knit round. The first needle you can knit across just like normal, but on the second needle, we're actually going to knit most of our stitches through the back loop. So let's go ahead and knit across this first needle. And when we get to the second needle, I will show you exactly what you need to do. I'm at the end of my first needle and I've just knit that first half of the row just normally. Now I'm gonna turn around and take a look at these stitches. You might not be able to tell until we get to them, but all of these stitches are actually open. They are not oriented the correct way. So when we knit this row, just this needle actually, when we knit this needle, we're going to knit all these stitches through the back loop. This is the only time that we have to do it and it's only to get the stitches oriented the correct way. If you started with a twist like I did, you're gonna knit this first stitch just like normal. The following stitch and the rest of the stitches on this needle, you'll knit through the back loop. If you started with a slip knot, go ahead and do the whole row through the back loop. So I'm gonna knit the first stitch like normal, since it is already twisted. And then you can see that these stitches are all open. So the rest of the row, I'm going to knit through the back loop. So just put your needle in, let it go to the back, wrap around and pull through. I'm back to the beginning of the round and I'm just gonna take my tail and kind of pull things tight a little bit and get my tail out of the way. So looking at what we've done so far, you've created this really seamless bit that's gonna be right on the tip of your toe. The hardest part is out of the way. Literally, that is the trickiest part of the entire sock. So now we're gonna start doing our increases. It's going to create a wedge for our toe. And the increases are really easy. We're gonna do an increase row, then a plain knit row until we reach our foot circumference. So for me, my foot stitch count is 60 stitches. So I'm just going to keep increasing until I get to 60 total stitches or 30 stitches on each needle. The increase rows look the same on each of our needles. It starts with a knit one. Then a knit front and back. So knit into the stitch 
wrap your yarn around, pull it through, but don't slide it off yet. We're gonna go back into the same stitch in the back. Sometimes I have to use my pointer finger to push that stitch over so I get some space in the back. So swing your needle around, go into the stitch in the back, wrap around, pull through, and slide off. And that's our knit front and back. Now we're gonna knit across until we get to the last two stitches on this needle. When you get to the last two stitches, you're going to do a knit front and back and then a knit one. So in that first stitch, you're gonna do a knit front and back. So knit the stitch, pull it through, but don't slide it off. Swing around so that you can get into the back of that very same stitch and pull through. And the last part is knit one. We're gonna repeat the same thing on the second needle. Knit one, knit front and back, knit to the last two stitches. When two stitches are remaining, knit front and back, and knit one. For the rest of the toe, just alternate a plain knit round with an increase round until you reach the desired number of stitches. Make sure you end by working a plain knit round. All right, I have reached my desired stitch count for the foot, which is 60 total stitches or 30 stitches on each needle. All right, that's all there is to it, to knitting the toe of a toe up sock. Next, we're gonna work on the foot and the leg. So come back for the next video to learn those two things. Have a great one.